and I want to bring up on stage two agency leaders who have been killing it in mobile recently, and I'd love you to hear from them and their experiences. So if you'd help me introduce Miroslav Kral and Wouter Shikoff, if I said that right, Wouter? <laughs> up on stage. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Come on over. Where's Android gone? He's over here. Welcome. Thank you. So guys, Miroslav and Wouter are here from the Czech Republic and from Belgium. Um, both are long-standing Google partners, agency partners and friends of ours. Um, they're also leading performance agencies uh, across EMEA and they're both big fans of Guinness, I understand. <laughs> oh, beer, beer. Beer, beer, <laughs> okay. Belgian beer. But they're not here to talk about Guinness. They are here to talk about videos. So before, um, I've, I've loads of questions I'm dying to ask you both. Could you just give the guys, um, give the, the audience a little bit of an intro into yourselves and your agencies and what you guys do? So we are a Czech digital agency, full service digital agency, uh, five years at the market. Today we have 23 people and uh, we are doing both performance, performance and branding campaigns for our clients. So we're a, a Belgium Luxembourg agency. Um, we've been in performance for about five years as well. Um, we are primarily oriented towards performance, but we are actually moving up, up a funnel towards uh, branding, uh, branding campaigns. Uh, we work with 15 people, and uh, ah, that's basically it. You're both very welcome. So let me start with your video, uh, your video journey. How you guys came to do um, came to do video. Miroslav, can you tell us a little bit about your journey to video? So uh, we started to think about video about two years ago and uh, tested on some out performance clients uh, to just expand the multi-channel strategy. And at the beginning of last year, we just said, you know, there is a large market of TV spenders, TV advertisers, who don't use yet online marketing. So let's try to go for them, hunting them, and shift them from TV spends to take a portion to online. So we started at April last year to address some precisely selected TV spenders. And today we have about five to six of them working on long term. OK. And Vaisher, so, so Miroslav went hunting for TV spenders. What was your route to video? Did you, um, did you follow a similar tactic? No, not really. Um, as an agency, we, we used to in subcontractor in subcontractorship of a, of a media agency for a while. Uh, but um, we started actually developing our, our, our services towards, towards video because we noticed that loads of customers that we have, well, e-commerce customers, they're limited somewhere in their reach. In search, so as you said earlier, um, they actually want to have help them grow their business, but obviously their their way of expanding their business and reaching out to new customers is limited if you just take it, um, go on the, the the lower funnel. So what we basically said, if we want to reach new audiences and want to reach new target groups, we have to move up, up a funnel. And obviously you go more towards um, display and video ads. And obviously video ads are much more compelling and much more inter interesting for advertisers to use. So that's why we actually move, move towards uh, video instead of keeping on, on display okay. only. And could you give me an example, Vyser, of a client who you are doing video for? So to speak. Um, yeah, service. so basically uh, we have a customer, it's called Smartoto. They develop actually digital photo products and um, they actually have a goal at the end of the year to be really top of mind of customers because that uh, their end of the year period is the most important one. Um, and this is typically a client which is very ROI targeted, very ROI based. And obviously, if they want to gain market share, you need to increase your, increase your reach and, and, uh, with new customers. So what we did for them is we developed a YouTube campaign specifically targeted just before the holiday peak season to actually reach out to new customers. And that campaign really allowed us to be really top of mind with people that were actually maybe considered buying their products, but also actually to reach new customers that we did not have before. Okay. And Miroslav, you, I know you are using video in more of a create demand capacity at the moment, and you talked about um, TV spend and accessing that market. Do you guys produce video? Actually not. Uh, 
uh, we take video from our uh, clients, from advertisers. It could be from TV, for example, because most of them is running TV campaigns. And what we do is that we enrich TV campaigns by online communication. So if they have already spots done for TV, we look at them if they are uh, available or uh, well adjusted for online use. If not, we just change them. For example, make branding in first five seconds. If you work with FMCG brands, it's very important. And then put them to YouTube. And of course, we are not doing just YouTube. Uh, we enrich the campaigns by other stuff because you know that from September this year, uh, the YouTube was changed a little, so you can easily get through YouTube video to the landing page. So to drive also visits of landing page about the product, for example, FMCG product, uh, we uh, add to the YouTube as well display and remarketing on display or bumper ads. And that's drive the people to the landing page. And if you look, for example, on a cross device, it's a lot of talking about the day. Uh, definitely, you know, if you do the YouTube, you should also target the mobiles. And if we do FMCG, for example, branding uh, for, for clients, we saw that, for example, 50% of all videos is watched from mobile. And at the same time, we know that if the user see the video ad on the mobile, they just more remember that. It's much better at recall there. So, for example, if we target between 18 and 35 years old people, we know that for millennials, which are up to 30 years, they have much higher uh, uh, ratio of video search or uh, watched on mobile, and they also have a much higher at recall. Okay, so you're not actually producing video, but what you are doing is you're taking video content or TV content from your clients, you're then adapting it to the mobile experience, and then you're amplifying that video from what you're saying with other search activity or display activity. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I would I add maybe, you know, this uh, TV advertiser uh, advertisers doesn't have uh, yet too much experience with online. So you need to educate them. You need to explain, you know, which is different between the rich and frequency, what they learn, you know, from TV, and how you translate it in online space. And also, they don't know how the video for online should look. So they don't know that you should have, you know, very dynamic addressing the users in first five seconds, just not be skipped. So you need also to educate them how they produce the video next time when they should think about not just TV, but also about online uh, different video production when they prepare the campaign. Okay. So you talked about challenges, which I might actually Vaisha, get you to expand on a little bit. So Miroslav's talking about the education of clients mm. and bringing them on that journey to understand video and how it works and mm. how it connects. Um, have you experienced any other challenges, seeing as video is still a fairly new area for you? Yeah, well, what we basically noticed is that we we ran quite some branding campaigns uh, for big for big media companies, and um, what we noticed that um, is that the really the really branded videos um, they tend to have a higher skip rate because actually people are confronted with a copy of the TV ad on their YouTube channel. And what we noticed is that not always everybody's interested in, in, in viewing that video. So what we try to do is to educate our, our customers and saying, okay, it's not bad to do branding, obviously it's, it's, it's important, but you need to find a, a new concept of getting the attention of the customer first. And then obviously you can, you'll be able to, put, to, to go by that 5%, uh, five, sorry, five second skip, and then you can really work on the brand. So what we basically did, said to our customers is that, okay, just flip your concept from a real branding, brand ad, brand TV ad, mm -hmm. into a more user-oriented ad. Just try and speak to your customer before you actually try to tell them. Just try to get the first engagement, the click, and then later on try and, and, and put work towards your branding. And we saw that it was a, quite a significant difference to, towards the campaigns that we did in the, in the past. Okay, so developing the content to make it work for the context, I suppose. Which yeah, so we actually, yeah, what we did in this case is actually we, it was a certain campaign, we developed 18 different videos and we used context to make the, the, the video more appropriate for people. So when they were watching at Eve, you would see an, an evening setting. Uh, we use um, different uh, emotional triggers, for example, people being really annoyed, and we would actually go into the fact that, oh, are you really annoyed by this video? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I will only take five minutes of your time, blah, blah, just to get the first five seconds to get appreciation, and then afterwards move on into what we actually want to tell the customer. So 
um, by looking differently at the content and, and how the video is produced, we managed to get higher, higher view rates, which is, if you look at brand exposure, what actually brand managers really want to have is they want to have as much time with their audience as they can. So if you, can, if you flip your concept and you're able to achieve that, I think the goal for the customer is achieved. So I think this is interesting because two performance agencies both moved into the video space, um, both working to some extent in the brand space and the performance space. Um, you don't produce any content, you do. And oh, we uh, use the partner for it. You use a right? partner yeah. for it, okay. Yeah. Um, and I guess I didn't touch on that earlier when I was talking about video. And if anyone is interested in video production content strategy, we can, of course, guide you on that. But I think it's really, we have loads of learning that we can share. Um, but I think it's really interesting um, Miroslav, in your case particularly, that you're enjoying such success in the video market without actually having to produce the content yourselves to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, so it is possible. But because it's not such a new learning, can you just talk to me both about your teams? Like, from an agency's perspective, have you had to upskill Miroslav? Have you had to bring in new people? How have you developed this competency, considering you've only been doing it for... In, in fact, we start from the scratch. So we, we of course, know the YouTube. Uh, we know the... Uh, the method, but we didn't use it before. So okay. uh, in digital, I think like everybody from you, you know, it's so much new things every month. Mm. So what we have to do like in agencies, it's to learn the staff on the way, on the job. So if I, you know, just grab some new stuff, I need to sell it to customer, like pilot, you know, try it. And then I learn it on the job. So. We start like that. So we apply the first video in some current customers, like, you know, just uh, enrich the multi-channel strategy, learn it. But of course, if you go for advertisers, TV advertisers, it's a different job because you need to learn how they think, how they behave, what they have, which KPIs they use, and teach them. So in fact, we've got a great, you know, uh, training from Google. So uh, we uh, cooperate uh, with one Googler on preparing the strategy for these advertisers. That's first. Second, we need to make some self-study. So, for example, I use uh, Google and Wikipedia to learn about reach and frequency. So also you need to learn this stuff. And also, we know, uh, now we have a couple of people trained on YouTube. So you need to invest to train your team to be certified and certification is just for a small step it doesn't mean that they were trained on the job so they need to learn on the campaigns and to be honest youtube it's much easier tool than edwards yeah than search because it's not so many stuff there so you can learn it quite quickly okay and meanwhile um just really helpful thank you uh, meanwhile, Vaisri, I know you've, you've partnered with other agencies who mm. specialize in content creation. You've partnered mm. with other media agencies, so I think you've learned by osmosis. But are you doing anything differently today with video as an agency than you were a year ago? What would be your biggest learning? Uh, I don't think that we do any, anything differently. I think what we just uh, taught our clients is that they have to think differently about their content. But, um, and I think... Um, other elements that we do differently is that um, we are now able to provide like really campaign mechanisms for our customers. So we can, for example, define remarketing scenarios, etc. Whereas in other situations, we were not always able to to push that out. So I think those are just two two or three elements which have changed a bit, but in not that much in the, on a day to day business. Okay. What sort of an impact has video had for you, Mirasa? How has it changed your business? Uh, definitely, it opened it opened uh, new segments of clients for us. So now we are uh, go also for branding, not just performance, which means that you just open the box with much higher budgets. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the second thing is that now we are really able to do the multi-channel strategy. So if you apply the video to your performance clients. You just get rich, you know, uh, emotion and story behind your campaigns. So although it doesn't, it, do, it doesn't drive the visits of the website or uh, it's drive impressions. And overall, when you look then in conversion rates, it's higher. Uh, just uh, yeah. what we see from your presentation, that conversion rates go up and, and branding searches go up, whatever. We see that on the, the results of our clients. So definitely, you know, 
it help you first, you know, get new clients, increase revenue from your services on current clients, and maybe, you know, also learn some created stuff, which is important for any agency for the future, yeah. So all good learning. Yeah. So before we wrap up, um, are there any questions in the audience? Would anyone like to ask the guys any questions? Is lunch calling? Is everyone starving? Oh, we, have, we have a question down here. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> Nearly. Work. Go around again. There you go. Stop. A little bit closer. <laughs> I just shout. Oh, okay. There you okay. go. You're on. Right. Um, it's actually a question for you, Sarah. I was just wondering what your thoughts were about um, sort of video's position on the SERPs. Do you see it as ever becoming part of um, sort of advertising in terms of actually a kind of a video advert within the actual search engine results page? So will video ever appear in the mainstream search results? Yeah, as an, ad, as an advert form, not as just as advert. part of kind of universal search. To be honest, I can't answer that question because I don't know for a fact. Um, I hope that it will become... Uh, become the case, but I will come back to you once I've, uh, I have an answer. I'm not sure if we'll even have one for you today, but I will come back to you. Um, but I think it is becoming an increasing part of the overall marketing mix and YouTube in itself, as I mentioned earlier on, is our second biggest search engine. And I think what's fantastic about video is you can actually now use it to connect with, with all of the platforms and, and users will move fluidly between the network and YouTube and search and back again. And it can certainly play a huge role in impacting all of the channels. Um, but whether YouTube will actually start to feature in mainstream results, I need to come back to you. Thanks. Question up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, your view on the, um, uh, because, for example, YouTube advertising, at least in Finland, where I come from, is, is uh, it's like a no-brainer because my clients pay like one and a half euro cents for uh, viewing a, a YouTube video and they, you can basically just take over the whole of YouTube on your <laughs> own field. So how does that, because you still have a limited number of good videos to kind of like display your YouTube uh, in TrueView ad, how, how does it, how quickly does it uh, start really costing you money that you 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 end up paying like uh, one euro per view or something like that. How is it in your markets, for example, or in your? Well, I guess I want to also ask like overall view. How is it in in other European countries at the moment? Uh, can you still get away this cheaply as as you can in Finland at the moment, where uh, the competition is just uh, really low as far as YouTube advertising? So can I just clarify, are you asking if the cost per view, are you asking about the cost per view yes. in each market? Yeah, and, and, and how, um, when do, can we expect that it will be actually uh, going up to like a euro easily or something like that because uh, how, how, is, how is it developing? That it will moment? rise, okay. Yeah. Um, how do we best answer this? I don't think there is a single answer because obviously it's an auction-based product and every market is different and, and we can target obviously based on intentions. Um, do you experience, well let me ask you a slightly mm -hmm. variation on the question, what is your perception on the value of YouTube versus offline media, particularly Miroslav in your case because in, you're advertising in Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How do you see the cost per view? I, I, um, personally, I don't see some high cost in Czech Republic yet. Uh, we pay for one uh, uh, watched video about uh, uh, just calculated from Czech rounds, it's about 0.6 Czech rounds, which is something about 0.02 euros, I guess, something like that for one watched video. And of course, this cost is differ based on your campaign. So if you, for example, have very good uh, targeting to your target audience, so you have very high VTR, Number, uh, percentage of people who uh, watch video till, till the end, you just drive the cost for one watch video down. So for some campaigns, we have really low cost, like 0.01 euros, something like that. And also if you uh, uh, spl uh, split the video for different uh, devices, for mobile as well, you can drive the cost for one video down. So this is first thing. The second thing, if, for example, we work for uh, TV advertisers 
and we apply the brand lift, what was mentioned here. So we can measure also ad recall for people who didn't watch video till the end, but just see the first five seconds or first 10 seconds. Yeah. You can see that somehow for some campaigns, the ad recall is also uh, uh, generated from the people client will not pay for. So if, for example, you have VUTR 30%, uh, in, in fact, you address other 70% of clients who remember the campaigns and then the campaigns have impact on them and these views are free of charge. So this is something what you should consider as well. So impossible to give you a single answer, I think, in terms of when cost per view will rise, but I think it is still very competitive in most markets. Um, <coughs> thank you for the question. Any more questions? I've got one up the back, why even furiously? I think this might be our last question, so. Here we go. Thank you, hello, hello, thank you. Hi. Uh, I think that I will have a question that uh, maybe will uh, um, be interesting for many of those that didn't start a video yet. Um, because if um, majority of us is a performance-based, uh, are performance-based agencies, and maybe we will find in our portfolio some client that uh, video can help them to go to the completely new level. Uh, then we come to the two points that we have to uh, overcome. First is how to consider, what do you recommend? How to consider them or how to push them to try the first campaign, video campaign? What is the best strategy you think? And the second, and maybe the more complicated thing for us uh, in such a situation is how to get for them some useful video that they can promote on YouTube, because this is the biggest problem in, in that case, because they don't know how to do the video, we don't know how to do the video, and they are not um, ready to spend uh, uh, hundreds of thousands to, to create a uh, very uh, expensive video with some uh, video uh, uh, agencies. Great. So there's two, I think there's two parts to your question. Um, the first is how do you encourage clients to trial video? And the second, if I understand you correctly, is if, video, if clients are nervous about creating content for the first time, how do you make that case? What learnings can we share? Um, I might jump in at my perspective and then please feel free guys to add. So I think on the first point, Brandlift is an excellent survey. Um, Brandlift allows you to report on everything from, as I mentioned earlier on, ad recall through to natural uplift and search behavior. So if your client does have content, I would encourage you to, uh, to trial that content on YouTube using TrueView and then use Brandlift to optimize and measure and prove the value of it. And I've no doubt you'll find it extremely helpful. Um, and it's incredibly transparent. On your second question, um, content strategy in itself is a fabulous day and we could do it if, uh, if, uh, if everyone, anyone is interested. We have lots of learnings to share in terms of what video um, is right for what time or what context, I guess. Um, and TV content can work, so brand content that um, perhaps creative agencies are making right now or traditional agencies, it can work, as, as Miroslav was talking about, and it can be adapted. But not all video content um, needs to be brand stories or storytelling or a typical 60-second brand spot. If you recall the Lightbox feed that I played earlier on in the demo, um, North Face have an incredible collection of product features, testimonial videos. There's a very powerful role for video in terms of product demos that can be used at the point of purchase to improve what you do to capture demand. So there is a suite um, of video content that every advertiser should have in their armory, but you can definitely build a roadmap with them to, to start with what they currently do and create the type of content that can help you um, at the point of purchase and then move towards creating content that can tell a brand story. And production values can vary, uh, investment can vary, and there are so many choices, I think, these days for how you produce content that the costs don't have to be prohibitive. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, from, uh, you know, if you look at the landscape of advertising, there is a plenty of new small studios, production studios for video. You can look at YouTubers. Yeah, YouTube guys, you know, they can make the great video, you know, every day from their mobile and cost is low or nothing. 
So if you'd like to work with current performance clients, you just need to find some local small studio or agency. And the cost of video could be 1,000 euros, not more. So if we look, for example, for a university, we just need to do some videos like interviews with students who are alumni, how they like university, what they learn, and also some videos with uh, professors, with tutorial. And it costs like, you know, five videos cost 2,000 uh, euros. But when we applied it to the campaign where you have search, display, remarketing, Facebook, everything, you get just emotional content and trustworthy content, and it works. And the cost is quite low because, you know, one student uh, search the video, you pay just 0.02 euros per one. Yeah, it's, it's very low cost and production could be low. So I just, you know, encourage you to try it because everything is for the first time. And if you try it, you can have be in two months in the situation like we are now. Yeah, I, just to add to that, I think it's important that, um, as, as my, my colleague says, um, get a local partner in. Um, you have lots of video specialists that come off of TV landscape and are doing something differently, you want to do something differently with their content they're creating. And those are actually people that can really help you shape a nice digital strategy about your video. So go and look for those local partners because they, in our perspective, they also helped us to really shape uh, better our campaign. So yeah, go and look for those people. And They're is there. this something we can help you with? So um, ask your ADM, your agency team. This is something we've lots of learning on and we can share. So guys, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I hope we've excited you by the power of video and you're all going to go forth into 2016 and use, use video to drive new growth for your agencies. Um, I think we're going to break for lunch, sir, is that right? So I think we're good. So thank you very much for your attention and thank you to my two guests. <laughs>